kommer ta, kom igjen! Ja, nå kommer først og fremst opp her, bra! Du er bare på 196 meter, kom igjen, du skal opp mye høyere enn det! 224 meter, kom igjen! Nå ligger du på 85,4, kom igjen! Du skal gjennom det 30 sekunder her! 30 sekunder klarer du! Kom igjen nå! Ny mål er om 7! Over 7 liter! My name is Olav Alexander Bu. I'm the coach of Christian and Gustav. I'm also a co-founder of uh, Santara Technology. So now we are back in Norway. We spent most of this year away from Norway, but finally back and back in Bergen. The reason for why we are back now, obviously a little bit family and uh, Christmas, but uh, also a very important topic now is for us to get back in shape for Paris 2024. That means that where we are just now is in uh, the laboratories where we have been doing the, all the testing of the last Olympic cycle. So the numbers we're collecting now isn't about setting like peak high score, but it's more about understanding where we are. The lab is really important for us because uh, yeah, we don't know what's going to happen when we go back to, to short course. With these results, it's basically you need to get better for everything. It's not like you need to increase your threshold or VO2 max, it's basically the whole line. So it's, uh, it's nice to be back. So the testing we do here is that we use a lot of instruments that is common to many people, but we use them quite differently. Things that uh, I test here is one, the metabolic profile. I test the mechanical profile and I test the velocity profile of the athletes. And then I look at biochemical efficiency and uh, a range of other uh, different markers. So we do DEXA. We do uh, also isotope uh, tracing of carbohydrate uptake uh, together with Morton. Then we are also working on new prototypes for calimetry uh, together with Green Tag, Beauty Master, and a bunch more. Just because we want to learn as much as possible of how do we achieve peak human performance. We're now basically starting from zero anyway. So all training we do would basically improve our stats for the next few weeks. So it's more the, the next few uh, times we go back to the lab, we can really, really uh, detail adjust our training. <sighs> Not too bad. The steps was pretty bad, but the VO2 max test was at least pretty good. So, uh, yeah, it's always have, good to have at least some positives for the test, but this is... We don't do these tests to impress anyone, we do it to uh, yeah, gather data and see how the body is so we can do smarter training in the future. <clears throat> and also we do it to reflect on past training, but since this is uh, a test of no training, it's... yeah, no reason to reflect on a season break, kind of, so it's good to have a starting point. We have, of course, a lot of data what it looks like or what, what it did look like to be the best. We don't expect that to be good enough going into Paris 2024. So what we benchmark it against is ourselves, and then we just look at, okay, how can we improve things? We have a lot of partners and then it becomes a big project, big team where we are sitting together and just looking at how can we possibly advance something. I don't believe in uh, the human limits that have been established so far in research. I think we can go far beyond it. We have history from what we've done, not just in mid-season, but also every winter we're going back to the lab and doing testing. And I know where I'm now compared to last year, compared to 2016, 2017. Then I can see how I'm responding over the next few weeks. And then I can sort of compare and then use the knowledge we've done before and also bringing that in combined with the experience we have collecting and getting even quicker back into shape. When we go back into the laboratory, we get one, we have of course the, the spot picture of Christian and Gustav all the way over the years leading into the Olympics, the development there, what changed and so on. And of course, the more data you collect, the more it's easier also to go back and ask new questions and look into the details of what did really change. But now moving forward, uh, why this is so important is that when you measure the metabolic profile with special protocols, mechanical profile, their velocity profiles, we can start to understand efficiency. We can start to understand performance and how this is composed and where we really need to put in the time to get maximum 
performance for the time invested. Because like in all, all kinds of things of life, whether it's money or whether it's time, uh, we don't have more than what we have. And then we basically have to take every hour that we have available and make sure that it counts. So what we're doing here today is more or less the same as we did yesterday in the lab with the bike and tomorrow also back in the lab again on the run. And basically what I do is that I uh, do testing of their metabolic profile, mechanical profile and the velocity profile. And the reason for that is because I want to look at different limitations uh, because the way I do training planning is that I take the available hours they have and then we basically have to put the hours where we get maximum return uh, in terms of performance for the hours that we invest now over the next period. So in February we will go back into the lab again, uh, mid-February we go back into the lab, then we had a good training block and then we're gonna see how they responded. Christian responded to the intervention we had with him, Gustav the intervention with him, uh, and see whether we nail it or if we have to continue to do adjustments because now everything is about getting back to Paris 2024. So one of the things of course that is quite interesting uh, with all the measurements we've done over the last years uh, is that also we see that the athletes respond quite differently. It's, you don't have to look for a very long time to see that there are quite unique differences between Christian and Gustav. They look, their body types are very different. And also when we look into the different profiles as well of them, uh, when I do the testing and so on, then you also see that they are very different. But then also when we just look at it in, from a purely training perspective and how they are training, how they're responding to training. So what the data allows me to do is basically to rather see where is the biggest gap for this specific athlete or for Christian or for Gustav, and then target that for a period and then we go back into the lab again and we see basically how did they respond or what did respond or actually both how did it respond and what did respond because the more we can have control over what they do respond to and not the more we can hone into those things they respond to for the next coming period and then of course at some point it will stagnate but then you need to target other limiters for example there in the profile this data allows me uh, to really understand each individual down to a level uh, which is impossible if you only go out and you do training. Personally, I don't believe in, let's say, call it a standardized approach where you have like uh, just this kind of training this time of the year, another kind of training another time of the year. The training should always be tailored towards what you really need. That means that when you then find limiters, for example, so if let's say that the the metabolic system would be the limiter, of course, then I would focus more on those characteristics in the metabolic system to lay the fundament for the next period to come. Of course, looking always, this is where we want to be at, at race time. And then, okay, how do we think that it needs to look like when we go into our race? And then, okay, how do I then have to work going backwards to get there? Knowing how much time we have before next race, that tells me where I need to put the priorities to make sure that they are ready. And for Christian and Gustav, I already see there are differences that I need to focus on to make sure that they are race ready in Abu Dhabi. Not any dream numbers, but uh, as I <clears throat> repeat every single time I talk to the camera, it's not about bragging numbers now in December, it's about, <clears throat> about starting somewhere. Them? How yeah. we can use them? What How we can use them? The only thing that he is humble about is that the numbers that he is producing now just after off season are basically what the other athletes are producing when they are peak season. So <laughs> The most surprising data during this test has been the level that they come in at after post-season uh, break. This is by far some of the best numbers uh, from a metabolic side that we have collected uh, any time uh, in history, not only on Christian and Gustav, but in general any athlete. That's both surprising, but it's also, of course, very nice. Uh, it's a nice fundament to build on from here. Statistically, there have been nobody that have successfully gone from uh, short distance or Olympic racing to Ironman racing going there and then going back successfully to Olympic racing at the highest level. People have tried uh, to go back. Many people have not qualified. Some have qualified, but number, nobody has successfully gone back to Olympic racing. I think it's a big challenge. Like uh, That's what's driving us to go from long course back again to short course. Uh, and also the fact that nobody has done it before is also a big 
motivation in it. And also after a, a full year of only long course, the intensity in the training is something that I've been missing. It's not easy to go back to short course now because the level is also insane. The guys racing a short course, they're really talented and also really hard workers. And now they're get, starting to get even more scientific. And I think we inspired a bit of the scientific approach. So we kind of made it even harder for ourselves because people are always learning from each other. Coming back to short course is going to be a, a big challenge, but uh, it's a challenge we look forward to. Uh, I really enjoy working uh, with my team, with, uh, with Adam, Christian, Gustav, Orion, my, uh, my mentor and also a part of the working group now. We have Green Tech here. The team from Green Tech come up from Switzerland to work with us here and we are really driving forward uh, prototyping. The same with Morten, the heads of nutrition on, and R&D came over here working on isotope tracing and really seeing how we can advance things there. And that's only a small part of the team. I think what makes me maybe uh, most happy and uh, excited for the, for the years to come is the fun we are going to have together as a team just in the pursuit of peak human performance, and then the wrestles will be what the wrestles become.